when you exhaust those doctrines, you can now move into perfection, where you now begin to deal with other weightier matters of the spirit. And the Lord stirred it in my heart since last week to be to teach on what I'm about to teach on. It is it is my desire and prayer tonight that by this teaching, the Lord will quicken our discernment and that he's going to help us to be more circumspect and more accurate as far as our spiritual adventure is concerned. If you believe that with me, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. I want to teach tonight on the subject that I titled the tribe of Issachar. Give us amplified. The tribe of Issachar. This is a teaching that is going to work upon our discernment and help us to be people of stature in the spirit. And I want you to please follow along. We're going to do a lot of prayers intermittently and then after the teaching, glad we've taken the altar call. So we have some time to press a bit. It says, and of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. It says 200 chiefs and their kinsmen were under their command. Let's go back to KJV. Father, grant us grace even by your spirit in the name of Jesus. The Bible talks about a very strange tribe. He calls it the sons of Issachar. And then the Bible tells us three things about these men that become prophetic lessons for us to learn as we seek to mature in spiritual things. The Bible says there were men that had understanding of the times. Very incredible credential that they were men that had understanding not just of things, but they had understanding of times. And then the Bible says that there were people who did not only have understanding of the times, they knew what Israel ought to do as per those times and seasons. And the Bible says the heads of them were 200. And as a result of their understanding of the times and the knowledge of what to do, the Bible says all their brethren were at their commandment. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the dominion systems in this kingdom, and especially as it concerns living in the cosmos, is the ability to understand the ways of the spirit, to have spiritual intelligence enough to be able to discern times and to discern seasons. There are many people whose lives ministries businesses right now have crash landed simply because they did not have the spiritual intelligence to understand and to interpret times hallelujah i have said it many times and it bears repeating again that god is a god of times and seasons please write it down in the dealing of god with men He's fragmented his dealings to work with the law of times and seasons. Times and seasons. Times and seasons. That means everything under heaven functions as a product of time and seasons. We have in Nigeria here what we call the rainy season. We have the dry season, the two main seasons. Across the globe, they have all kinds of seasons, autumn, spring, summer, winter, you know. And, and there are many things that happen across those seasons. A good farmer takes advantage of the seasons for the productivity of his crops or animals. There are seasons that naturally come with certain advantages. 
Hallelujah. Now the Bible says that among the many things that could be said of these sons of Issachar, the men of this tribe is that number one, please write it down, that they were men who understood the times. They had an understanding, not as an individual. Can you imagine? As a corporate people, that there was a structure within their tribe that helped them to understand times. So the first thing we see about this tribe of Issachar is that there were men who had understanding of times. They knew how to maximize times and seasons because they understood the times. Number two, the Bible says to know what Israel ought to do. So it's one thing to understand the times, but to be able to draw out a strategy that becomes an advantage within that time. That is the second thing that they had. The Bible says to know. They had knowledge. They had strategy to know what Israel ought to do. So they had an understanding of the times. Number two, they knew what Israel ought to do. And the Bible says as a result, there was dominion dominion their brethren had to be at their command for direction give us genesis chapter 1 and verse 14 please this is the creation story and the bible tells us in genesis chapter 1 and verse 14 that god said let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night please pay attention and it says let these lights be for signs and let these lights be for seasons and let these lights be for years for days and let these lights be for years you know what this meant let me tell you this i've read this for i don't know how long but the lord opened my eyes and noticed that timing was fragmented into day and night and then signs seasons days years and the bible says for every one of them there is a kind of light that signifies when it is day there is a kind of light that signifies when it is night there is a kind of light that signifies years and special signs even in the heavenlies So the first thing that we see the sons of Issachar having is what I wrote here as discernment that came through understanding. Please write it down. Discernment through understanding. Discernment through understanding. The Bible said they understood the times and that that discernment came through understanding most people are unable to maximize seasons please listen in their lives because they are bankrupt of discernment what is discernment the faculty of spiritual perception please write it down that when we say you are somebody who has discernment it means you have trained your organs to be able to perceive the impulses of the spirit discernment is the faculty of spiritual perception the ability to know what god is doing the ability to know what the devil is doing the ability to know what is happening even within the cosmos is called discernment it is a superior faculty that the believer in partnership with the holy spirit can sustain and the bible lets us know that one of the indices for measuring the maturity of a believer is the strength of your discernment are we still together that strong meat belongs to them who are of full age it says who by reason of use have exercised themselves to discern between good and evil it takes discernment to know what is really good and it takes discernment to know what is really evil because as far as the cosmos is concerned good can look like evil and evil can look like good are we together so this tribe of Issachar trained themselves 
they stepped up their their discernment their ability to perceive things happening within the heavenlies listen let me tell you the truth there is no believer i know who can excel consistently when you are dull of discernment the world is too spiritual for you to excel bankrupt of discernment respectfully speaking there are people who have died today that they shouldn't have died if they had discernment am i right on that yeah there are many many things that have happened around our lives ministries businesses homes that are credited directly to the absence of discernment the ability to read the writings on the wall the ability to know what the holy spirit is saying per time there are businesses that many of us should not have gotten into if you had discernment. Now, watch this. The Bible says the Spirit speaketh expressly. You know, that some in the latter time will deviate from the truth and they will give themselves to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. My expression there is the fact that the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Holy Ghost is not always talking, but the Holy Ghost speaks. But many people have not trained their discernment to recognize the voice of God. You may want to make reference to my teaching, the voice of God. I did a teaching there helping us to understand that when we talk about the voice of God, we don't just mean the speakings of God. We mean every spiritual mechanism that can be used by God to communicate his will and his intents to the believer. It's called the voice of God. So the voice of God is not just limited to the sounds of God. It is, it is a holistic capture of every mechanism that can be deployed by God to communicate his intent to the believer. The objective of the voice of God is that the believer comes into the awareness of the will of God. Because the jurisdiction to enjoy God's power, God's favor, God's grace is being at the center of the will of God in fact the assignment of God's power is to bring you from wherever you are into the will of God are we together so many believers have not been able to train their discernment there are many fathers today who the realm of the spirit kept showing them that an attack was coming on their children and because they did not train themselves spiritually to discern they could not do anything about it there are many people who by signs similitudes scripture dreams god has been showing them several things positive things to happen and negative things to avert but because they have not trained themselves to discern let me tell you ladies and gentlemen i submit to you that in these end times it is costly to be dull of discernment it can cost you your life hallelujah jesus looks at nathaniel a man who just finished insulting him can anything good come out of nazareth and he looks at nathaniel and here's what he says an israelite indeed in whom there is no guile it takes discernment to speak like that jesus looks at the man called peter and even though he saw a spirit behind peter he said get thee behind me satan and he said peter satan has desired to sift you like wheat in other words there is nothing wrong with you as a person your compassion and your good heart is an advantage for the kingdom but i need to separate you from this ugly spirit that is trying to destroy you discernment in the book of acts the bible talks about the apostles paul are we together now yes how that a damsel came and met them and this damsel was using divination and bringing money and gains for her people and when she saw them she began to preach that these are the men of god who have brought glad tidings you find that in acts chapter 16. the first 24 verses talk about the the bible says this happened for many days and one time he got angry angry in his spirit are we together now and he looked at her paul now being grieved in his spirit he commanded that spirit to come out of her 
That's how they landed in the prison that they used praise and worship to come out of. This was what got them there. Hallelujah. Many people are dull of discernment. There are some of us who never seem to get free from trouble. You walk headlong into trouble. Every scheming of darkness against you walks because there is no discernment. When the Holy Ghost is saying pray, you are not even sure he's the one speaking. And quite honestly, you don't care until you land into trouble. There are many people about to start journeys that the Holy Spirit keeps pointing to them. It does not have to be a journey that ends you in danger. We are talking with respect to the will of God, not good or bad. There are many things that you will arrive well and yet you are already dead. Once it is not the will of God, you are still in trouble. So you, we don't rate life based on good or bad. We rate life based on the will of God or outside of the will of God. There are many, if the devil wants to destroy you, he will schedule many good things to happen in your life that are outside the will of God. Are we together? For instance, giving you a visa, when is the will of God for you to be in Nigeria? Now, that may not be an evil thing, sociologically speaking, but you will travel not only out of the will of God, out of your destiny, out of so many things. Why didn't God stop Jonah from entering the boat? When Jonah was paying for the boat, I can imagine that every passenger that was entering that boat, they, I'm sure the angels were saying, oh God, so all your business, Oga, is for nothing. You're about to lose your property because one person got a boat and was on his way going. And then when the people were throwing everything, he kept quiet and was sleeping. It was when they casted lots and it fell on him. He said, truly, okay, let me talk now. I am a prophet. God sent me to Nineveh. But I know God is a merciful God. If I talk to them, they will repent. I don't want them to hear the message so that you will help me and punish them. So what do we do with you now? Throw me out. You thought the people say, ah, that's too much. They threw him out. They had lost their property and everything. Are we together? Thank God you're a prophet. They threw him out. Listen, God has helped us to come thus far today by this faculty of discernment. I look back at my life and I can see where glory and shame was separated by the distance of a needle, only waiting for discernment. That if you had taken one wrong step, your life would have crash landed for nothing. Hear me, God is speaking to someone in this end time right now, the believer must train yourself and i'm going to teach you how you must train yourself to step up your discernment you can have five people come even if it is judas not every kiss is a sign of love a kiss that is supposed to be a sign of love and intimacy can be a strategy to the enemy the one i'm kissing is the one that must die when he came and kissed jesus jesus looked at him and said you betray your master with a kiss he didn't say sorry. He didn't say anything. He just left him. There, for some of you who put your cheek for everybody, you need to um, you understand it's a figurative statement. Some of us are so fragile emotionally that even when the devil brings his mouth near you, you just believe that every sign of a kiss means love. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Every handshake is not a handshake of fellowship. There are handshakes that are, that they are signals of deception. Every prophecy is not prophecy that edifies you. No matter how it sounds, it is the ministry of the spirit behind it. It is not everything that glitters that is gold. Are we together now? Say discernment. Please shout it. Say discernment. There are many children today whose destinies would not have been wasted, respectfully speaking, if their parents had discernment. Remember what happened when Samson was about to be born. Manoah asked a question and they said, no, 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 please, let the angel return and give us details 
as to this child we know that since this child came by prophecy he would not be an ordinary child and instructions came that he would be a nazarene and his hair would not be cut and that became the symbol of his strength until he decided to kill himself by himself are we together now listen to me every mantle and every destiny has the the spiritual code of operation that protects that oil listen let me share with you a, a powerful secret there is a consecration for every mantle it's not enough to know you have a mantle you must know the formula given by god to protect it there are certain graces that is in the place of worship that that anointing is released you can be anointed and you do not know by discernment what activates the working of the spirit within you and you will find out your life will look like you are not called are we together there are people because of the kind of destiny you have for you the formula god gives you is every time you want to see a miracle hold hands with your husband or your wife and agree that is it no matter what deception once two of you hold your hands and pray the truth must come out it may not be a formula for everybody but by discernment you can step into what becomes your secret code of operation unbelievers know this but many many believers are bankrupt when it was time for the prophet to prophesy he did not feel like prophesying he said bring me a mistral and as soon as they began to pray a mistral the bible said the hand of the lord he didn't say the hand of the lord was coming anyway he understood the secrets that provoked the hand of the lord are we together Those who lack discernment in this end time, ladies and gentlemen, whether as men of God, whether as business people, one operation of the spirit of discernment can be the difference between victory or defeat in the life of a believer. Some of you are about to get into businesses right now that will make you cry from March till December. You've not had discernment. You don't care. Some of you are about to drive good people in your life because you do not have discernment to see. Everybody who comes to me must be a millionaire and someone will come looking like, like someone who just came out of prison. Whereas that's the person the anointing is on to help you. But because you lack discernment, some of you have driven everybody holding the key to your door. Now you are wondering why the door does not open. Because if you see John the Baptist, he does not look like a prophet. He will come with rags and sometimes we're eating locusts and wild honey who wants to be a friend to such a man however that's the man god has chosen are we together i remember when god started speaking about coming to abuja i've shared with you that story to help you it took three years of wrestle wrestle before that time, I could be having a program somewhere. I would travel into Zaria, arrive around 5.36, go and have a meeting, and then by the next day, I'm out of the way again. But when it began to come, I said, Ah, God, what is this one again? I struggled with the Spirit verifying and re-verifying and re-verifying. When God finally gave me the verification, I went with my eyes closed. Listen, let me tell you the truth. For some of you, God is speaking to you right now. You are taking too many careless destiny steps and ignoring discernment. The mercy of God has been shielding you, but I don't know who I'm speaking to. You need to mark time. Speed 